Next question is pr- from PSTC Teakins. What tips would you give to an aspiring entrepreneur who wants to open their own gym starting small, of course? All right. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you cut me off. I always feel like I crush people's dreams. Like, Don't do it. If Bad idea. If you're like, okay, here's the deal. If you're an entrepreneur and that's what you are, then the excitement for you has more to do with creating successful businesses, meeting the challenge, selling them. If you're into your passion, you might be labeled as more of like an artist or someone who's passionate about something. That's a little bit different. Usually people are a mix of the two. If you want to build businesses that are successful, it's hard to pick a business that's harder than gym business. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that's just a fact. It's, it's a brutal business. Yeah. The gym business is a very difficult business to really, it costs a lot, it's a lot of capital. It's there's a lot of risk involved. There's not a lot of money too. Not a lot of money. There's a tons of competition. Y- you are working your. I mean, I man, I managed some of the most successful gyms in these in these big chains, and I'm telling you, man, I was I worked you know t- minimum twelve hours a day, minimum just to do just to to do well. And this was with the h- m- huge marketing machine by behind me, lots of capital. Then I owned my own. And it was, it, it's hard, man. It's like opening a restaurant. Like, mm-hmm. look at the success rates of restaurants. It's like opening gyms. So it's going to be real tough. What are my tips going to be for you? Um, make sure you have a lot of money to float yourself for a while because you're going to be in the red, I think, for a little while. Focus on your local community. A lot of people forget this when they open gyms. They start, they think digitally and they think they're going to do this huge, like, internet marketing type of thing. Mm-hmm. If your business is, is your members... I think, what is it, a 10-mile radius? That's where you get a majority of your members. If I, last time I looked at the statistic. Yeah. So old-school marketing is actually quite effective still for small gyms. You work with local businesses. You go to houses around you. you you're you trying to get 10 miles around your gym. The digital marketing more is like for almost like your your business card. But I would, I would spend much more time on the uh, ground, walking around, meeting people. You know what I was thinking about too? And it's like, what's your definitive difference out there in the market, you know, in terms of like all the rest of the gyms and what are you offering specifically? I just think as an example, uh, something I've seen lately, which you guys have seen sort of the, the trend of, of women really wanting to grow their glutes, right? So there's been a few of these like smaller type gyms that are just literally hyper-focused on this gym provides you this service. Like we're just going to get grow your, your glutes yeah. and they're exploding, right? Yeah. And, and that's the thing though. It's, it's not like what you think. Like, I'm just going to service everybody. Everybody wants to come work out. Like you, you ha- like, I think in, in terms of uh, what's out there now, uh, and the, the big gyms are already established and they've had this whole formula of like, Oh, I'll take your money. Cause I know you're not going to show up. You know, like, I think that's, you, you let them have that. If you're just starting out, I think you got to be really creative and really pinpoint uh, that that very specific thing that people are actually like going to drive to your place to go get. Well, I so I know I came out hard on it right away. Right? I always say terrible idea, and that's me personally. Like I would never do it, and the only way I would do it personally was if I'm at a place in my life where I'm not financially driven anymore. And cause I, I like the idea of having a gym. Like I have, I like the idea of having a, you want to be the guy that retires and owns yeah. his gym and sits yeah. in there. I'm filthy goes, yeah, rich. I don't give a shit if it's profitable. Yeah, or not. I a hundred percent will own a gym one day. Yes. Not to make money. Exactly. I like, I'll buy all the equipment outright. I'll own the building that it's I'll built have in a gym and a bar. All but, it'll be closed yeah. at the hours <laughs> that I want to work out. So me and my buddies can come in and lift that. I don't give a shit that I kill sales for me. Like that's how I want to have a gym. And so I think, I think you you really have to understand what your desired outcome is going into the gym. So if you are somebody who uh, you desire uh, freedom and autonomy and the, the the cool factor of walking in at any time to lift in your gym, and that trumps paying your bills and making really good money and thriving financially, then so be it. Like who am I to judge and say that's a bad idea then? Because you could definitely make a living doing that. But I, I think the last time I, I looked up the stats on what the average gym owner makes, it's under $50,000 a year. You better love it. Yeah. yeah exactly. You better, because you're going to be your trainers in there are making more money than you. Yeah. You know, that's going to happen. And, and so 50 grand a year, depending on where you live in the country is, is not a, is not an easy living. You, Bay big, Area, you're struggling. And you're working a lot. And, you, and the average entrepreneur works 62 hours a week. So that's an average entrepreneur. If you're a gym owner, I think it's even higher than that because you're going to probably be there a, if it's open, you're probably there at the very beginning. 
So I think you need to consider that. I think you also need to consider the different types of models and what you're trying to do. Uh, running a large box gym. I mean, even when working for companies like 24 Hour Fitness, uh, those were not their most profitable. So going big is not a great idea. I think that's a lot of risk and there's not a lot of money in that. Uh, the most profitable gyms right now are the little boutiques that are about 3,000 square feet to Justin's point that are more specialized. So it's an in, in, in EFT base. So you get a, you know, but, only need about a hundred and something. Yeah. Members. They're high service, high dollar. High yes. service. Yeah. yeah because yeah, yeah. you're looking at, that's, that's what I was going to say, because kind of your two options are low service, low dollar. So you're cheap, right? Like Planet Fitness, right? Low service, but it's very cheap, but you need a lot of volume. Lots of investors need to be involved with that. Right. Model. Or high service, high dollar, low volume, right? So I only have a hundred people, but they're all paying me 250 bucks a month or something like that. The other thing I would suggest to this person also is you better have gone and killed it as a trainer or killed it within a gym yes, first before 100%. you even want to think about doing this. Because- Becoming a great trainer and keeping your your schedule filled with clients is already hard as shit for people. That's hard to do with a, a huge company taking care of everything or all you have to do is contract the yep. space out. So you better have been the number one performer at a big company as a gym and at a big box gym for a long time or you better be the top dog in a contracted place out. So if you were somebody who's renting space for $600 a month, mm -hmm. you best be the dude who's making a hundred, the girl who's making 150 to $250,000 a year just doing that alone before you think about trying to start a, you know, brick and mortar place while also trying to scale a training business. Like, cause you're going to want that. Like I, if the only way I would consider it back then to even do something like that is, okay, I've got a good safety net of one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars a year that I've built off of being a great trainer. Now I'm going to try and build this gym and create a livelihood for ten other trainers in my gym. At least I have this to fall back on that I can at least cover my bills. Let's see how good I can well, also I look, manage I a gym. Owned, I owned a small facility, and when I say small, it was tiny. I had uh, a, I had a you cage. were under three thousand square feet. Oh which, yeah, I had a cage. I had uh, a cable machine. I had some benches, some dumbbells. Like that was it. It was just a, a, a small area. I had some offices. My gym was packed, so I had trainers that were paying me rent. I had massage therapists paying me rent. I had acupuncturists paying me rent. I had my schedule full, and I had trainers making as much money as I was in my facility because they would pay me their rent, and then they'd train their clients. And there were definitely times when I would think to myself, like, why am I <laughs> yeah. owning and managing and taking all this risk when I could just pay rent at some studio and make more money. Now for me, it, it, I chose to do that because I would rather be the owner. I'd rather have that autonomy. Um, I loved it, so I lived there all the time. It didn't matter for me. But I'm telling you right now, if you're thinking financially, uh, good luck. It's a, it's a really, really tough business. And Not only that, but wouldn't you go back and tell the younger self, yours are like, you know what, knowing what you know now, a better strategy would be to go build a business like Mind Pump, make a bunch of capital, take that capital, then go buy out your equipment, buy out your facility. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, of course. And then I still fulfill that dream. So if your ultimate dream is yeah. I want to own a gym and that be kind of my livelihood, I think there's faster ways of getting there than actually opening the gym. Yeah. Yeah. I think go, go be, into finance first. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Go do the, something the, else the, that, buy that drives more revenue that you're more likely to be successful in. Which, by the way, if you can actually build a gym and make really good money, you're probably pretty badass at a lot of other things too. Yeah. Because yeah. it takes quite the entrepreneur to be able to build a successful gym. It's not some dumb meathead that builds a a, a gym and actually makes six figures no, plus. No. Look, you're gonna, if you open a tiny studio and you, you're starting from scratch, it's going to cost you a hundred thousand dollars at least just to buy the stuff set it up and float it that's minimum here's the other thing if you're a, a high service high dollar low volume facility that means you're going to have to be in a wealthy area which means you're going to pay high rent so you also have to consider that as well now you open a small gym that's twenty thousand square feet you're up in the hundreds of thousands of dollars or million dollars just to get started so and closer to a million yeah i know because how many yeah. times i thought about doing it right yeah. Now, of course, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Would I change anything? No, it led me to doing what I'm doing now. 
But I don't know if I would have lasted just doing that forever. At some point, I would have got out of it. I mean, I know we're all going to own a gym. Yeah. I, there's no doubt. We talk about it all. The question is when the timing, you know, yeah. when do we want to do that? And I think I we all know it's when we don't care if it's profitable or not. Mm-hmm. That literally it could have five members and we're not going to be stressing can, out to keep the lights uh, buy on. out all the Planet Fitnesses. Which I, they, I, think this, I think it's really similar to owning a bar. I think that's some of your bars that everybody thinks are – probably crack and successful. I think there's a huge overhead in owning a bar, but a lot of the people that keep the bars that are going for a long time are people that don't need the money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like the it's their favorite local spot to yeah. go to and they've got other businesses that they make a lot yeah. of money. Now that being said, if you if you took us and put us in a big box gym that wasn't doing very well, I'm confident we could definitely increase their revenue and increase their profitability. But it's a lot of damn work. It's oh. one of the most, I mean, one of the most challenging things. Like I said, I, I have an uncle that owns a restaurant. It's very comparable. Like my uncle lives there mm-hmm. all the time. Like yeah, he's yeah. always there. That's what it's like running a successful gym. You are just there all the time. You have your morning crowd, you have your evening crowd. <laughs> You're in the always middle. putting out fires. Oh yeah. yeah totally. All day long. 